Okay, so my name is Orisha Shola Abraham. I work in accounts, but I am highly creative. I like doing stuff like this, bringing people together to discuss, to talk. I love organizing events. I love doing stuff for uh, the homeless. Um, I, I'm a lady who wears many hats. Uh, I just enjoy life, really. Um, and today's topic, to be quite honest, I, I got really excited about it because I just want to know how other people are living their lives um, as single people whilst they're waiting. Hence our topic uh, for today, single, happy, thriving whilst waiting. And what is thriving? Are you living your purpose? What are you doing? Are you just sitting down waiting for Mr. or Mrs. Wright to turn up? What are you doing? Before I go on any further, I'll just, you know, mention a few house rules. Um, please, in the there's a chat room you can chat amongst yourselves but please make sure you're polite and respectful of other people's views. Please, please, please. Um, you know, we're all different. We don't all share the same views um, all the time, but please be mindful of other people's views. That's very, very important. So we don't, we don't upset or offend anybody. So we're going to go right in, but before then, I'm going to ask my co-host, Injide, to please introduce herself, and then we can kickstart our discussion for tonight. Go on, Injide. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Like Shola said, my name is Injide and I, um, I, I wear many hats like Shola as well, which I wouldn't go into right now. It's such an exciting topic today, you know, um, and I'm looking forward to diving in and hearing everybody's view on this. We can all learn and share and um, yes, and see where we get on. So, so such an exciting topic. It's good to be here. Welcome, everyone. Yeah, fabulous. Thank you so much, Injide. So, the topic has been pinned in the chat room. Please, you know, you know, uh, write your questions or discuss amongst yourselves, and we'll be going through the chat room as well to sort of like see what people are saying as well. So, if people are not comfortable to come on stage to speak, stage, yeah, stage to speak, we'll just sort of like read the questions out. Okay. So, I'll just ask a few questions before we go ahead, and I um. A couple of scriptures came to mind this morning um, as I got ready for, for, for tonight's um, event. So Proverbs 17, 22, it says, a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. What do you guys think of this? When I read it today, I was like, oh my goodness. I remember one time in my life, I used to be so, so, so boring. And just I just I was just miserable about so many things. And honestly, I, I felt like I wasn't living my best life. And I think people around me could actually tell that I just wasn't living my best life. But when I decided to be intentional about how I lived my life, whether I was single or whether, whether I hadn't met anybody, I just saw the change in myself. What do you guys say? What do you think about this scripture? A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Injida, what do you think? Very quickly before we open up the floor for people to start speaking. So that's the truth. <laughs> yeah, a cheerful heart. And if I would go, I would answer that from the point of energy, right? Okay. If you are cheerful, there's an energy around you, right, mm -hmm. that everybody else is drawn to. And there's yeah. that cheerful energy, that light energy, that welcoming energy, that joyful energy. But if we're down in the doms, even if we try, no matter how we try to be happy, somehow, yeah it kind of overflows into how we communicate, mm -hmm. how we relate to other people. And we probably have this sign on top of our head saying, oh, I'm down in, in the dumps for whatever reason, right? Yeah. So absolutely correct. It does, yeah. you know, yeah. yes, without yeah. a doubt, yeah. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Okay, so tonight I've actually invited someone I met at church. Um, okay, her name's coming up as something else right now, but she'll introduce herself when she comes on. And the reason I invited her, you know, to come here to actually share with us, and please feel free if you want to come up and speak, please just raise your hands, um, you know, raise your hands and I'll bring you on stage to speak. And if you just choose to listen, that's fine as well. So I've invited Victoria because I watch Victoria on Instagram and it's not just, it's not, this is not just her posting stuff. I know her personally. I have seen her. 
I watch Victoria and I'm thinking to, to my, you know, I think to myself, wow, I love the way this lady lives her life. You know, I'm not going to say much more, but I'm going to ask her a few questions and just ask her to share with us. And I just want you guys to listen. And then please, when she's done speaking, anybody who wants to come on stage to come and share their own, you know, experiences, you know, with us um, living their life, you know, as a single person, I hope you're happy and I hope you're thriving in your single state whilst you're waiting. I hope that's what you're doing. But before before you come on stage, Victoria, please can you share with us um, how long have you been single? Hi everyone, good evening. My name is Victoria. Um, oh gosh, <laughs> I, can't, I don't know for how long now. It's been a while, but um, one thing with me is, and I think it's very important to be happy within yourself. So whether you're single or you're not single, that happiness and knowing who you are is very very important. Mm -hmm can be a journey for me it was definitely a journey and once you find that peace within yourself and knowing who you are first um not that people won't come and try and talk to you but then you know what you want and what your standards are because you know what your value is as a person and happy within yourself one thing i find is if you are too desperate and go and be with someone the worst thing you can do for yourself is to be with someone and even feel more lonely because it's not the right person for you that has been my experience so I love life. I think the older I get, <laughs> I might be having more fun. Um, maybe also with I work, I have activities I like doing, and I just live. So I think one thing for me that is very key is having great connections with friends, both male and female. Having, um, what, what do you call it? Um, also surround yourself with the things that you want. Couples that I admire, I surround myself with. Sometimes I go, I even babysit from time to time because those are things that give me joy. So, so and, and going for events that promote the things that you enjoy doing. So irrespective, and there are times you meet people, you talk to them, you have a good conversation, nothing comes out of it, but you still had a good time out. So one thing I also tell people, don't wait till you find the person to live. Live, um, just live life continuously. I love to travel. I do oh. at least seven countries a year. I was, I, was, I was just going to come to that, Victoria. I was just yeah. going to come to say, yeah. how do you spend your time? Because, you know, um, there are days and there are weeks and there are months in a year. How do you spend your time? Do you plan? Are oh, you God. intentional about the things you do? Do yes. you plan for these things? Yes, I am. I mean, most of my friends know me. If you want to, you can't just call me and say, oh, let's meet up for lunch. My phone is my diary. I plan things a lot. Even with my travel. As much as I like to travel, travel does cost. So one of the things I do like with planning, for example, is I am not a big shopper, let's say Christmas time and festive period because things are expensive. A month, for example, just a tip for anyone who's interested, January tends to be a time where people don't have money because they spend over the Christmas, but that's when you have a lot of sales with travel. That's when I tend to book most of my trips for the year to hold my flights and then also hold my accommodation you might not necessarily have to pay for it up front but it's to secure the price and that's part of the planning you have your budget for the air that also determines where i would go to based on the budget i have and also schedule in time to meet friends um i work i also sing in church i like to travel i want to spend time with family members but also being intentional and scheduling the time because all of us have busy lives but if you don't actually schedule that time even scheduling time for rest and just shutting everyone out and just say, look, this is just me time to just rest, sleep, go to the gym. Well, that it's not, um, and you have to be very intentional. So my life, for example, people think I'm very busy, but actually in my business, everything I do, I actually enjoy doing it. And that's what's important. So it doesn't feel overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Victoria. I'll just I'll, I'll come back to you in a minute, but before we, we come back to you, I'd just like to say, if there's anybody in the room who would like to come on to actually share their journey, please put your hands up and we'll bring you onto the stage. And um, for the benefit of those who've just joined, this is Say It Loud. And why Say It Loud? A lot of times people are shy or they don't want to express what's going on on the inside of them. Maybe they're scared of being judged. Maybe they're scared that people would see them as maybe maybe not having hope or lost faith, you know. So here is a safe space for you to come and just express yourself freely um, and also learn from other people, be encouraged by other people's uh, life's, you know, experiences and um, 
please feel free. This is a very, very happy, vibrant space, as you can tell. I'm so excited. I can't even contain myself. So guys, I want to hear your stories. I want to learn from you guys. Like I said, I watch Victoria all the time, traveling around the world, you know, and as you have heard, she actually plans for these things. So I'm going to start calling out some names. That's the kind of girl that I am, you know, John, Marcella. There's a very interesting name I can see here. Inda Panda, I like that name. You you have to come on stage with that kind of name. Come and tell me where you're logging in from. Rachel, Annie, come on, people. Let's hear from you. So I've got up. Okay, Anika, I love brave people. I, the, the hands are coming up fast and ready. Come on. So we'll take about five at a time, right? Okay, all of the all of the hands are coming up. All of the hands are coming up. Okay, so um, Paulina, can we have you share your experience, please? And if I haven't pulled you up to the stage just yet, please bear with me. And when you come on stage, you actually have to unmute yourself. So um, whilst Paulina is waiting, if you come on stage, please unmute yourself so we can hear from you. Are you ready, Paulina? Yes. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Loud and clear. Great. Oh, great. Hi. Good morning. Well, I just joined in, but I think you're talking about experiences like being single in Christianity. Yes. So basically, I mean, what, yeah. <laughs> what, what we're saying is, you know, are you single? How are you yeah. living your life? I hope you're living a happy life and I hope you're thriving yeah. in whatever it is you're doing. So, yeah. I'm extremely happy. I turned 41 years old this year and I met Jesus five years ago. And since awesome. that happened, it has been a roller coaster of things. I've been doing a lot of missionary work. I went to Italy one year after I got baptized. And then I was serving in Waiwan, Puerto Vallarta for two years and a half as an interpreter and translator. And then I moved to Playa del Carmen in Mexico and I've been, I've been supporting their ministry that helps single moms mm -hmm. mainly. And I still support them from here. I'm, I'm in Canada now, so I travel a lot. I'm, I'm super blessed. Like, I would love to have babies and, and be married, but that doesn't happen yet. And uh, I don't know exactly what God's will is for my life. But so far, I've just, I travel a lot. I have a remote job. And I do ministry and service and volunteer everywhere I go. That's mainly how I've been living. And it's very rewarding to give back and just to share the gospel with other people that don't know that Jesus is alive. And he has given me a lot of um, happiness. And of course, I'm looking for my special, for, for someone, right, to, to share that with. Yeah. Someone who also likes to travel and do mission, missionary work and just sleep on the floor or whatever, you know, not... Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love that word you use, rewarding. Injide, what did you think of what she said? You know, so far what Victoria has shared and um, Paulina as well. Rewarding. I love that word. You know, that everything she's doing, she finds it rewarding. You know, as she, she's just going about doing her stuff and she's happy and she's still waiting for that person to come along. And I know that as you serve, as you do the stuff you're doing, that person will come along. Just don't lose faith. Don't lose hope or anything like that. Injide, what do you think? Yeah, I've just put a comment in the in the chat. I found yeah. that Paulina, Paulina is such an exciting array of stuff she's been doing. But what stuck out to me was the fact that wherever she goes, Jesus is at the center of it, just shining her light mm. wherever she goes. All mm. right. So that's just I, I I have taken some things from, from what she's done. I'm going to try and incorporate that into my own lifestyle because that sounds really rich and rewarding. And I agree completely that Jesus will find us in the place of service. I kind of feel that sometimes we're so um, focused on finding the one and then our prayer point is, Lord, when is it going to happen? Lord, who is the one that showed me the one? But I was so inspired by what she shared that it's in the place of service the place of going out there being the light doing um the best we know to do but also living our best life right yeah. um that we, we will connect with the one um, yeah. yeah so exciting yeah. stuff yeah i'm yeah. well done well okay. done, Paulina. That's excellent. Yeah, well done. And well done to Victoria as well. <laughs> Thank you. I know Victoria. Victoria, I, I I'm watch coming Victoria to you. all the time. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm you coming know, to her for tips. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, fashion tips, anything you want. That's Victoria's got it, honestly. That's the way to leave. So I just welcome uh, people who've just joined again. I see lots of people are joining from Germany, from all over the all over the world. Welcome to this a beautiful, open, safe space where we come together every Wednesday, not, not every Wednesday, every fortnight on a Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. British Standard Time to discuss everything, you know, mature singles talk about or are too shy to talk about. This is a safe, safe, safe space. There's no judgment here. There's nobody here. Here. We don't claim to know everything, um, you know, everything ourselves. We're here to learn from you and hopefully you learn from us as well. I can see Poloco. That's a very interesting name. I can see Poloco um, as well wants to um, say something. But I have a couple of people on stage here who haven't spoken. Anika, are you ready to speak? Ken, Hi. Are you ready? Hi. Um, yeah, I was, you know, when you said about just like literally anything, well, something I've been pondering recently um, as a woman in her 30s who is fairly content being single, but also, um, as Paulina has said, you know, would like, would like if that was the Lord's will for marriage and babies and all of that. But I'm very content in my everyday, you know, work and such. Um, but the one thing I, I've been thinking about recently is how as a single woman, sometimes I find myself in this position of uh, almost being infanticized in a way, in like a, um, like almost a sec not a second class citizen, well, sort of, within within Christian circles or um, that sort of thing when on obviously our friends who are married with children like that's their priority um, mm. but it sometimes you know I, I I've lived in a very good community before uh, where it didn't really matter that I was single. I had lots of friends that I could call upon, but that's just not a season of life that I'm in currently. I mm. have friends that I can call upon, but it's they're not. It's not as rich a community at the moment as I, that I'm part of, and I'm, you know, trying to sort of um, build those connections. Um, but yeah, I just I wondered whether anybody else wanted to sort of speak into that. That's okay. the, that feeling of of feeling kind of not yeah less than or like that you're not quite plugging into church okay. community Christian okay Christian. so so what I'm getting from what you're saying is I don't know whether the church you attend maybe there's more sort of like you know uh, families there married people is that what you're saying and yeah you're there, are, there are a few of us who are single mm -hmm. um but there are probably like more yeah Okay, so so what about what about I mean, like the church I go to, we have what we call connect groups. So um, different groups in the church from you know little pockets of you know where they meet and do stuff together. So what about just having like a community of like single people and you guys going out and doing stuff together? So that way you don't actually feel left out or you know of, of, of stuff I mean does anybody else have anything to say about this because I, I feel I mean right now I'm not in a connect group because I have uh, my core friends outside of church who are single and we do lots of stuff together for instance this weekend I'm going to a barbecue and I, I you know decided to invite my single friends to come along you know because I'm the one who knows the one who's having the barbecue but I thought to myself I don't want to go there by myself I want to bring my friends to come along as well so we can all have fun together so what about creating you know fun for yourself and maybe your fellow single people and that way you don't really feel like left out I mean what does anybody mm -hmm. else have anything to say to that I would echo exactly what you said Shola um mm -hmm. connect group yes has worked for me also a suggestion which we've done in the past was where because sometimes people didn't um for example because didn't want to spend a lot of money um to go out so one of the suggestions I've done this, we actually did this three weeks ago, was ask one of the married people, could we come to your house? Mm. And all the single people came to their house and we all made food together and ate there. So that's a way we could all mingle 
without breaking the bank mm. and and having a fantastic time and we, we could stay as long as we wanted but i think having those connections are very very um important yeah I yeah you have to i think you do have to put yourself out there more so um in order to you know I there's a 20s and 30s group at my church and I'm very much you know like so, to attend things that are you know we have a, a bible study each week most of the time and but you know and it's a mixture of different people but there is like quite a divide between like the men and the women in the group and like yeah so why don't you because you know obviously this sounds like something that's like really I don't use the word bugging you so why don't you do something about because most times we're waiting for somebody else you know to organize to set up the event why don't you do something about it and the interesting thing about salt and what I have observed since I started hosting this event here is that you go that there are lots of events coming up every day you know why don't you come onto these events and connect with different people right here in this room there are lots of people from London and please in the chat room you know chat amongst yourselves I see people saying anyone from Germany here and you know if you live in London you know ask people are you do you live in London and then just connect with people obviously with caution as well because we don't know um you know you don't just go off and just meet anybody you know get to know them well before you actually then meet up with them but try and connect with people find ways you know and this is one of the reasons we're having this uh, conversation today because honestly at one point in my life I used to be a very miserable person and I decided no 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 I can't do this anymore how much more longer you know will, will, you know will I live on this earth you know I'm not going to live forever I better do something about it and I decided to be very very intentional about how I live my life okay um for more people who've just joined the room in do you want to sort of like update them on what's happening just so they don't feel left out yeah, so hello everyone and welcome to Say It Say It Loud. Um and Say It Loud is a safe place for mature Christians to come and have the kind of conversations we're having right now because sometimes we have all these things in the back of our minds, we're processing um certain things about our Christianity, about being a mature Christian in Christ, and we don't know where to process with or who to process with. And this is a platform, this is a room to to have such conversations. Um, This is our second edition, and today we're talking about being single, happy, thriving, whilst we're waiting. So, yes, it's good to have everyone on board. I just wanted to quickly hop onto the chat and, and share what has been shared so far. Does that make okay. sense? Share what has been shared. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, apart from the greetings and people trying to connect, finding out where they're living, I see we have just about... Um, covered quite a few continents, if not all of us, people joining from te- from Dallas, we have people from Netherlands, but um, I think a lot of our agreement about singles in church, um, very few single people in our church, said Duane and Claire, I think it's Carrie says the church doesn't know what to do with single people. Um, uh, let's see, sorry, I'm scrolling through the chats. Yes, and they're just having conversations. It's good to have so many people having conversations amongst themselves. Yes, lovely, really lovely. Great, great <laughs> stuff. Great stuff. Thank you, Injide. I've just brought, I think I saw Effie's hand go up. But Effie, before you go um, go on, I just want to share another scripture I read out um, for the people who joined early. Um, so Psalm 34 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good and blessed is the man who trusts in him. You know, um, I'm 50, going on 59, I'll be 60 next year. I am still trusting and I know that the Lord is good. And until then, I am going to live my life joyfully. I, you know, for me as a single person, I, for many years, I, I was going around playing with people's dogs on the streets and everyone used to say to me, why don't you just get a dog of your, of your own? And now I have my little dog. My dog keeps me on my toes. She keeps me so busy I don't even have any time to be miserable I tell you even when I don't want to get out of bed the dog is like listen we've got to go for a walk you know a walk so you know I'm just finding ways of just enjoying my life loving my life living my purpose what I'm doing right here right now this is what I love to do so hey let me get somebody else to um, share their journey FA unmute yourself and please share 
and please give us feedback as well in the in the in the chat room as well we'd be grateful to have your feedback as well fa are you ready to share or anyone who's on stage right now i don't think we've heard from ken ken hi everybody hello Hi, yeah. Um, I just quickly wanted to share uh, my experiences with regards to joy, joy, sadness, and um, depression. But I'll follow up quickly from what um, Anika, Anika said um, about contentment. Um, many years ago, I realized that I wasn't experiencing the amount of career growth I wanted to experience at the time. And I, I just had... Um, a breakup and so I was hurting and all and because of that I just felt stagnated but when I was doing um, a quick reflection I realized that actually do you know what God has been good and um, because of that I was being ungrateful to God and so at times it's we have to be contented of what we have and lack of contentment will bring about anxiety and the Bible clearly instructs us not to be anxious for anything. So we owe it to ourselves, you know, to, to, to appreciate where we are at at various points in our lives. Yeah. And um, the other thing I wanted to say was um, regarding, there's a scripture in the Bible which says, um, if I can find it right. Uh, so the joy of the Lord is your strength. So it clearly, if you could clearly see from there that the Bible equates joy to strength. And so at times when you when you're down, when you're low in spirit, you're low in mood for one reason or the other, life happens. Um, the best thing to do is to choose to be happy. Um, I realize that happiness is a choice. Life would throw so many things at you. It's normal for life to throw so many things at you, but you have to decide to be happy and it's supposed to be a very it's, it's, it's supposed to be intentional if you get what i mean so yeah um if you choose to be happy that strength to go out there that strength to socialize with, with people and to create net meaningful networks it will definitely come so yeah that's that's my take on joy Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. Joy is strength. Joy is strength. I really, really like that. You know, the more joyful you are, you get stronger, I tell you. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that, um, Ken. I've just brought Javi on stage. Um, Javi, do you want to share with us? Javi's the first man on stage. A big round of applause. <laughs> thank, you, thank you. Yeah, I think um, in terms of relationships, I think um, first things first, uh, I want to be careful on, on how I say this is in order to have a good relationship, you need to have a good relationship internally with yourself, but mostly with um, our Lord Jesus. Because once we have um, the fundamentals right with, within ourselves, then it's... Um, uh, then Jesus can, you know, put us um, or allow us to meet the person that he wants us to meet. Because um, in my past relationships, I, hands down, uh, rushed my relationships, which did not end up great. So I've learned to just step back and you know, um, take a take a reflection. Which, as I mentioned earlier, it's um, having the fundamentals right first within ourselves. When we do that, then we can, um, you know, we can actually develop a relationship with our future spouse. Mm. Harvey, I totally agree with you. And I agree with you because I, just like yourself, I had to step back and I had to search inward. I had to say to myself, are you ready to have or to be in a good relationship with somebody else? Are you, I had to say to myself, am I in a good place with myself? And when I made that decision to be in a good place with myself, I tell you, I just wasn't anxious about things anymore. I just started living my life. 
I just said living my life and I just know that when the right time comes, the right person will find me and we'll find each other and together we'll just leave and just fulfill purpose together because for me it's really about fulfill, you know fulfilling my purpose with the person that god you know would have me be with thank you so much for sharing that um, uh, sorry, Victor, um sorry, go sorry go on yeah i was going to just um finish off by saying um i think i can't remember which verse it is it's but it's um i think it says many many are plans of of man but it's it is the Lord who establishes our steps. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. I I hear you. I hear you on that. Um, Victoria, Njide, anyone on stage want to add? Anybody in the, you know, I don't, we don't want to be the, the only ones talking. I'm sure you guys have loads to share with us. For those of you who've joined, welcome to Say It Loud. Here we're, you know, in a completely safe space where you can just share freely. Um, we're not here to judge anybody. We're here to just learn from each other, um, appreciate each other, encourage each other. And Simi has got her hands up. Go on, Simi, say it loud. <laughs> yes hi um so i think for me um personally i i think i've just gotten to the point where I've, i think i've always been the kind of person who is very content with being by herself but i realized over time that i've become too comfortable I, I mean it's not a bad thing but um i think that even though i've never been the kind of person to care about pressure or whatever anyone else is doing you know when you also get to the age where it seems like everyone around you is like okay getting married having kids it's almost like it, i had to like also do another reality reality check that you know um is there something that i should be doing that everybody else is doing that maybe i'm the only one who doesn't care much i mean maybe not the only one because i have other friends but i just don't care much about it and i think it was just being honest with myself to be able to you know have that conversation again that you know is this something you maybe want or you don't want and um how do you like what do you want to do next and um I think for me I'm still very comfortable being by myself and I don't think that's ever fully going to change but I also know that at the same time I I do eventually want to have a partner um, and, and I think that's just being honest, right? At some point, I definitely would like to like have my own person and have my own partner. Um, and I, I remember like I tried by myself in the sense of like, you know, dating and going out and, you know, talking to people. And honestly, it just wasn't clicking. And I think what God then sort of, because I went back to God because, I mean, <laughs> you try to do it on your own strength and I'm just like, okay, okay. I don't think this is working. Okay, so I went back to God. And, okay, so what do you want me to do in this season? Like, I just to get clarity on what God wants from me in this season. And I feel like what I heard very clearly, first of all, is like no dating apps. I'm going to be honest, I only have this app to listen to the talks. I do not use it to like talk to anybody. Ah, um, sorry, sorry, sorry. Just one one moment. I need to jump in there very quickly. You've yeah. just stolen my topic for next week, but go ahead. <laughs> no dating apps, go on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but like, I'm not using dating apps to meet anyone, so I actually don't talk to anybody on this app. Um, I, and God just intention, just like be still. And I feel like, that's what I've, I've heard very clearly um, that in due, and I feel like I've also gotten confirmation in just like different ways that when the time is right. And I, I generally told God that, okay, if this is not what you want from me right now, then I need you to take the desire away. Okay. And interestingly enough, it sort of did. And I just honestly cared less. Um, and in, the interesting thing is then people then started popping up and I'm just like, okay, I'm sorry, but I'm <laughs> I don't okay. know if I'm shooting myself in the food by then say, but well, I mean, I've not met anyone I'm really interested in, but like, it was just very mm -hmm. interesting how things sort of changed when I decided I didn't care anymore. So okay. it was like, even though sometimes if you go somewhere, you subconsciously think, oh, maybe I'll meet someone here. Now I actually don't care whether okay. or not I meet someone there. And mm -hmm. it's has just made for so much. 
I think they're just taking so much of that pressure off my back because I'm just like, well, God, this is up to you now. So if you don't want, if you don't also want me to, you know, be in a relationship, and that's also okay. It's not the end of the world, you know. Okay. So you're you're saying you're saying that you're happy where you are right now, um, and you made a decision that for now, in this season of your life, you're okay being by yourself, right? Um, yes, but okay. I, I, I still stay open, I'll be honest, but I feel like okay. one thing that has consistently stayed with me is seek you first, okay. the kingdom of God and, and everything. everything. And I else. think sometimes I think back to my life and some of the really amazing things that happened for me, they were not things that I did on my own or in my okay. own strength. Yeah. So that's the sense that I get that this is not something that you can strive for and you know fight and try to get this on your own. It has yeah. to come easy. It has yeah. to come like in God's way because yeah. God still wants the best for me eventually. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, that's the way I think about yeah. it. Yeah, I hear you. I um I hear you. So you know, um as long as you're happy, that's the most important thing. Thank you so much, Simi, for sharing your journey. Um I just want to ask um Injude to please um just update the room. Let the people who've just joined us know what we're talking about, even though it's pinned in the chat room. But Injude, do you want to let people know what we're talking about? Yes, hello, because I saw somebody just ask what is this about? So this is a room called Say It Loud. And the reason why we've called it Say It Loud is it, it's for mature Christians. And there's certain conversations we don't want to, or we are too shy or too reluctant to have. Why should we? All right. So this is a room to have those kind of conversations com confidentially, you know, transparently, a space to have such conversations, right? And today we're talking about being single, happy, and thriving whilst we are waiting so that is what we're talking about i just want to quickly say fa had been was able to unmute and she wanted okay. to say something so do you want to unmute again if go for it yes hi everyone i'm so sorry i've been having trouble with the app <laughs> Apparently, but, I think yeah, just, before but... you, just, just before you go on, please, can I just ask everyone, when you come on stage to speak, please, could we just be mindful that um, we just have limited time on here and that other people would like to speak as well. So let's just be very mindful, um, you know, so sort of like allow other people time to speak as well. But thank you all so much for coming on stage. We truly appreciate you. Go on, F.A. Yes, thank you. Definitely. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say like, this is really encouraging. I'm really glad I found this um, talk. I think this is something coincidentally that God has just put on my heart very recently about like, not just like living as a single person, but like thriving, as you guys have said. And I think it's, um, it's something that I would really love to do because I think I've definitely been someone who's in the past, like, um, I'm not very patient. And um wanting a relationship and things like that I've t I've tended to like become impatient with God but um just recently I'm just learning like to live my life really and it's just I just love hearing about everyone who's like living their best life and like they're out there you're not just like sitting in some corner waiting for someone to find you but you're living you know and I think like one thing though since this is like all very like still kind of new to me um that I'm struggling with is balance because I tend to be someone who's zero or a hundred. So like, if I don't care about something, I'm like, I don't care about dating. I'm not even going to glance at anyone. I'm not even going to try. But then if I do care, I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is all I think about. So like, I'm still struggling to find that a balance of like, as people would say, being open, but like not letting it consume you. So I'd love to like hear from people on how you do like balance that. And, um, yeah, I, I think it's, um, it's sometimes I, I do feel like it can be like a mixed message of people that are like, oh, you have to like, you know, do your part and get out there. But then they're like, oh, but like God is all you need. But like, then mm -hmm. don't do too much. And I'm like, oh, like, what do I do? Somebody tell me. But, yeah. you know, I would love to hear from other people how they um kind of balance like caring, but not caring too much and being open, but not being too open if that even makes any sense. Yeah, I, I completely hear you. And I'm sure there'll be somebody in this room who probably has the same thoughts as you. And I'm sure there'll be people in here who have, you know, some tips on how to actually balance things out. Thank you so much for sharing that, Effie. Um, I want to welcome the second man who's come on stage, Robert. Robert, who knows? You, Robert may have the answer you uh, or tip to share with you. So Robert, please unmute yourself. And if you could please help Effie, that would be great. Um, or if there's anybody else in the chat room that can sort of like, you know, share some tips 
for F um, FA, please do so. Um, Robert, you've got the mic. Hi, hello, hi. Um, yeah, I'm Rob. Um, I'm, I'm I live in the UK. Uh, and it is, I, I love this conversation. It's, it's very interesting. Um, for me, I, I think that when it comes to dating, where we are in society at the moment, where where things are now, it's for, from a man's perspective, it's much harder to approach women these days because of where the the lot of the you know if if a man approaches a woman nowadays, it's it can be quite dangerous in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's one thing that I think that's one of the reasons why maybe a lot more not a lot of women are getting married as as much because. Back in the day, like very, very far back, even in the biblical days, you know, the, the men were approaching the women um, and it was much easier that way. You know, you, you would engage in events and then you might meet people. But even nowadays, even you might go to events, you might even meet in church, but then people are still, well, from my, from my perspective anyway, sometimes I'm just, I just feel scared to approach people because of the connotations that come, come with it sometimes. Okay. Um, but wow. I feel like this is where, um, women can then help in a situation because the, the assumption that if you sit in the corner and someone's going to find you is not the right way to look at it because it's kind of like if you are going to write a test like an, an exam and you know you pray oh pre- lord please let, let me pass my test let me pass my test but then you don't do anything in action then you don't really get to pass it because in case you, you revise for your test but you don't do any revision at all but then you, you know, you just keep praying 24-74. If it's like a, a test that's like in 24 hours, but then within the 24 hours, you just keep praying and praying and praying. But you don't really steady for it. Then you don't really get to pass a test, if that makes sense. Robert, so I can feel I, like... Can... Robert, can I just ask you one question very quickly? You use the word dangerous, that it's very dangerous to approach women. I am trying to understand that. Yeah, so... Late, I don't know why. In for example, in the UK, um, you know, because of the things that have been happening on the news, for example, and things like that, men are more cautious nowadays when they do approach women, um, because if for whatever reason, sometimes women can then say that oh, this person, you know, um, is harassing me, for example. But you might you might just say hi, and then that can be that can go against against you as a man sometimes. And I've, I've experienced that stress on myself. Okay. So it's something that is out there, but it's, um, I guess it's, it's, it's where I'm saying that it's also nice for women to also show a bit of action as well, a little bit sometimes, so they can oh. find a middle ground. Okay. So, for example, in the olden days, what happened was if a woman is find a man attractive, he she might like drop her handkerchief, for example, <laughs> oh dear. and the man might pick it up. And then say, oh, you dropped it, and then have a conversation from there, that kind of thing. But nowadays, it's everyone is just doing their own thing. So, and then it's that 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 link between engaging between the sexes is not is not is is dying out. If that makes sense. Okay, I get you, Robert. And I chuckled when you said drop the handkerchief, and then he would have <laughs> like you know. So, um, I see Colin has come on stage, and I think Harvey probably wanted to respond as well. So, ladies, yeah, okay. please, if you don't mind, I'm going to actually let the men speak because a, a few ladies have spoken. So, Colin, do you want to speak? Um, do you want to respond to this? Um, and then the ladies, you can chat in the chat room. And just very quickly before you speak, Colin, welcome to Say It Loud. Anyone who's just joining us, we're talking about being single and being happy and thriving as you wait. Take it away, Colin. Say it loud. Hi, thank you so much. So I think, I think um, in, in, uh, in relation to what, what you were talking about there, Robert, I think that there is that that wrestle, I think, as, as a man myself, of knowing how to, to have that healthy approach to women, um we have in our church uh, a protocol which i could i understand where, where men will pray of men and women with women um i um i i meet a lot of i have a lot of lovely women in my church um and i have women to speak to but often there there is that feeling that if you get too close to them you feel like you're perhaps being quite inappropriate but one one of the wrestles i have and one of the things i really want to get off my chest um and talk to to people about um 
and this has recently come into my mind, is that the guy or the girl one hopes for is not going to come falling from the sky or knocking on your door. I, I feel we, we, we can't just do nothing because like, if I want to find a woman or I'm like, she's not going to come knocking on my door or falling from the sky into my arms. Like, I've got to get out there and do something. I can't not talk to girls. Um, but I guess it'd be, it'd be lovely to hear from the woman as well. How, how would you, you feel if, if a guy you, you didn't know just, you know, he, he wanted to speak to you, but you didn't, didn't know him because I, I can't spend my life as a single guy just, assuming a woman's just going to come knocking on my door or falling from the sky that's mm. not going to happen i need to get out there and get to know women if i want to meet a woman um so yeah uh yeah. Be, be interesting to see what people have to say thank you very much for that um colleen um victoria are you here are you still here if you can you respond to that are you happy to respond to that yes um i'm happy to respond so for me um i would say when people um uh, First of all, the scripture of faith without works is dead. So I think, uh, because someone asked the question earlier. So yes, we should find comfort and peace that God is with us and that he will supply whatever we, our hearts desires are according to his will. But also there's intentionality that is required. Not to say, and when I say live your life, do the things that you enjoy doing. Not to say when you go out today, like, oh, I'm going to find someone. Just live, because I think in the process of fulfilling your destiny, um, things will come to you. For guys, I um, for I don't think well to be able to meet someone, you need to be available for someone to be able to talk to you. And I like the fact I I heard the other guy that said it's scary to talk to women, um, but also if you don't talk to women, how are you going to get to know the person? Also, one thing I also want um people to be mindful of is because sometimes someone might just come to have a chat with you and some people from day one they're talking about marriage mm. and I think that's another thing that scares guys off I'm an only girl with five brothers so these are some of the feedback I get from my brothers and my male friends so sometimes just meeting having a conversation you could find someone have conversation even probably you might find similar interests go and have a conversation but find first of all is that person, do you like the person? Is there attraction? Are your values similar? Is it someone that there's a potential you can build something with? Or sometimes you could be someone after talking to them, you might think, nah, it's not someone I want to build something, but don't just cast them away. There are people I've had in my life who came first to try and date me, but we've been friends for years because I knew it just wouldn't work. And I've also met people through them because I kept a friendship. And sometimes it's funny that some of those people, when I even want to pick, their brains from a male perspective, there's certain things I would never think as a female. So it's not everyone that comes to talk to you that, yes, it will develop into a relationship, but you can still have friendships out there. So men, I encourage you to speak. Women also, be open. And also, if it's someone that you don't really like, also be kind, I beg you. Because even if it's someone you don't want to proceed with, still be kind in how you say no thank you. Um, that's all I'll say. Yeah, Victoria, a, a big round of applause. I, t I tell you, um, just listening to you, I had to think back to my own life. You know, when I was much younger, and how I actually used to act when people maybe I didn't really uh, find interesting or like how they would come up to me. And I feel, you know, women, we need to be much kinder to these men because honestly it takes a they have to be brave enough to actually so a woman's body language alone can even get a man scared to even walk towards you so ladies i hope you you guys are listening please let's not frighten the men off you know they want to talk to you and as as victoria has shared you know just be kind to them you don't have to agree to date them if you don't like them you know you could end up being friends with them you know and Jude, what do you think Yes, I was I was actually going to kind of hop in and share some of the things in the chat. Chat is buzzing. I can't keep up. But two yeah. things kind of stick out to me. Let me just share that quickly. Um, and that's what Ken, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. If I've murdered your name, I apologize. Ken says, I think to find a balance, one one would have to oh gosh, I scrolled up to spare with. Let's try and find it again. Uh where uh, yes. One <laughs> one would have to decide what is priority at a given time but then make gradually steps towards future expectations so again about balance decide on your priority per season per time and then but keep your future in mind 
Mm. Tabby, Tabby said, these days and age, we are more cautious as people are into all sorts of alternative lives. You may approach what you believe to be a beautiful lady and only to find out there's a man behind the makeup, which is kind of a valid comment, isn't it? Because um, there's just so much going on um, currently. So you have to be, again, I'm looking at that from the point of view of being discerning. And as everybody was speaking, what came to my mind was pray, pray first. Um, yes. And I think it's been mentioned so many times. If we keep that open dialogue with Jesus, if we keep talking to God, keep, our, keep prayed up, um, and have, keep having that conversation, that dialogue with God on a constant basis, then some of the things that we think um, are an issue or a challenge possibly would not be an issue or a challenge. And then I, I agree with Victoria completely. And when we live from a place of contentment with self, be at peace with yourself, like um, this today, I actually went out with three of my friends who were actually married. I, I am the only one that is is single without a partner, without a husband in their midst. And I had a great time. I didn't feel, oh, look at me. I'm looking for a partner, whatever. Wherever we find ourselves, sometimes it's easier said than done. But if we can find joy in ourselves, in, our, in knowing ourselves and being content that we are loved, we are accepted by the Lord. Um, I think things, sorry, there's no background. Things eventually do kind of align themselves. Right, that's what yeah. I have to say. And yeah. then quickly, welcoming Falcon yeah. says everyone's different. If you leave, if you leave that person's life, you would be the same. Don't judge. I, uh, I don't, I don't know. Maybe more clarity is required around that. But yeah, that's it for now. Thank you so much, Injide. I'm just looking at the time and I can't believe that we just have six minutes to go. So we have to make good use of the six minutes before we come off here. Um, just very quickly, I'm just going to share again what Say It Loud is all about. We come into this space every other Wednesday, so every fortnight, uh, 7.30 British Standard Time, uh, where we discuss everything that people want to talk about, you know, within re good reason, um, things people are shy to talk about, afraid to talk about. We don't come here to judge anyone. We'll listen to everyone. We want people to come into the space and just be comfortable enough to share their views and hopefully encourage other people, learn from other people and um, get tips, you know, on how you can actually go about living your life as a single person, being happy. And there are lots of other conversations going on on the table. Um, so please, um, look up other events as well. I'm sure you get alerts as well. Please leave feedback and comments just so we know how you are enjoying the table conversations. Um, and uh, if anything has blessed you in this place, please spread the word, you know, let people know that these conversations are going on so that people can come together and just be in a, you know, within a community of people who are enjoying life and thriving and doing what they like to do. Like I said earlier on, I love bringing people together. So we may not be seeing each other physically, but I can hear your voices and I'm just glad to be able to hear you, share with you and just learn from you as well. So would anybody else like to say something because I'm just looking we're going to start counting down before we close the room but before we do that um I think he was uh, was it I'm not sure who he was who actually mentioned uh something and I said you stole my uh topic for next week so dating apps how are people showing up on dating apps and Robert actually shared you know how he's too scared to actually approach women so how are men and women showing up on these dating apps and I think somebody else mentioned um that she wouldn't even bother with dating apps you know um why are we not bothering with dating apps why so we're going to be talking all things dating apps next um, next week but I also want to say that a lot of the conversations we have going on here is to actually build us up encourage us not to sort of like pull us down weigh us down so when you come in here please always know that by the time you leave here my hope and prayer and uh, Injida would agree as well is that you leave here feeling refreshed and blessed as well so and um, one last word from anybody and uh, we can then sort of like count down and um and call it a night and thank you all so much for joining in from all different parts of the world we truly appreciate your time and we're we're glad that you came into this room today so anybody want to share anything i would like a man to speak solomon came onto the stage i knew i saw a guy put up the hand solomon hi how you doing i'm good thank you yourself i'm good thank you so i just want to um say 
you know, I was listening to Victoria. She said, you know, um, approach a woman, you know, with the friend, with the view of friendship. I would say, just like Victoria said, and uh, you know, I know for guys these days, sometimes it can be, it can, it can seem, you know, that it might. It might be a bit scary to approach a woman, but, you know, if you go in the view that, okay, well, if nothing, a friendship may come out of it, you know, you can't really go wrong. So I would say do that. And other than that, you, you know, just be fulfilled with yourself, you know, find yourself always doing things and always keeping yourself busy. And um, I think, you know, have the relationship with God as well, because whilst you're, single you know that gives you that opportunity to really spend uh reading your bible um uh, and you, you know just getting to know god more really and prepare yourself for uh, your next relationship fantastic fantastic what a way to actually end uh the event today thank you so much for that solomon uh Injide, do you have any final words uh, I'm back in the chat box typing thank you everyone for joining in I, I completely agree with what Solomon said about being content to yourself, keeping our mind focused on friendship first I hear people say it very often, sometimes it becomes like a cliche isn't it, let me just move away from the crying child um, um, but you have to be friends with someone rather than having the mindset of I want to be married and want to be married possibly look for friendship let this person be my friend first. And then you move on to other things. If something comes out of it, good. If nothing comes out of it, at least you've gained one friend, right? And also being in the word of God. It has helped me a great deal being in the word of God, I tell you. So, yes, I just wish everybody... Sorry, I hope you're not hearing that noise. I'm moving around to find a quiet no, spot. No, you're, you're fine. You're fine. You're <laughs> I, fine. I, just, just, I just wish everybody God's love. Let us all go away with the confidence that no matter what, single, married, divorced, widowed, wherever, wherever we are, we are loved of, of God and that and there can't be any um, greater love than the love of Christ, wherever we are, in whatever yes. state, right? Yes. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for that, Injide. The most important takeaway for me is stay in the word of God. Be content where you are right now. Trust God. You know, um, one lady who came on earlier and talked about, you know, all the things she's doing and she just finds it so rewarding. Victoria has shared her tips as well on how she lives her life intentionally, how she plans her holidays and everything and what she does, you know, as a single Christian woman. She sings in the choir, but she, 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 she you know, she's got a job as well, but she, she's very intentional about the things that she's doing to keep body and soul going, you know, while she's waiting. I can see one hand going up. However, I'm I'm afraid I can't take any more um, speakers on stage right now because we have to shut the room down. I just want to say thank you all so much for joining in today. Please do join us um, next time, which will be the 30th of August at 7.30 p.m. British Standard Time. Say it loud where our topic will be, how are people showing up on dating apps? Why are people not showing up on dating apps, especially us Christians? Let's not make life difficult for ourselves. We say we want to meet people, but then we're not doing what we have to do, like joining a wonderful dating app like Salt. So come on, guys. Um, yes, thank you all so, so, so much for joining. Uh, God bless you all. And please keep on living a happy, robust life. Be very discerning in whatever it is you're doing. Keep trusting God. And I'll just read the last two scriptures again that I, um, that the scriptures I actually uh, read at the beginning. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. And Psalm 34 verse 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. I think that's a, a good way to actually end today.